What's going on guys? So in this video, I will be installing <laughs> an aftermarket Honda billet thermostat housing and a 2007 Toyota FJ Cruiser. Before I start this video though, I do want to mention if you're going to do this and you're going to follow my example, please take every precaution necessary and I would almost urge you to not do this. I'm just trying to show that it, if it is possible. So don't just change it because you want to build thermostat housing. If you're doing this upgrade, you need a good reason to do it like I have a good reason to do it. So do this at your own risk. Another thing I want to mention, Miranda Farms Coffee. They're not a sponsor. They're not sponsoring me, though I wish they would. I, I love their coffee. It's so good. It's actually on the big island of Hawaii, um, and it's grown in the area called Kau, K-A-U. So same island where they have Kona and the famous Kona coffee. Theirs is award-winning coffee. They have legitimately good coffee. So check them out if you're interested. It's definitely some tasty coffee. It's weird, I know, um, and you're probably thinking, why not put an OEM one in? Well, I talk about that more in detail in the video that I just recorded, the basics of it, if you don't wanna go and check out that lengthy video. I changed out to an all aluminum radiator. Purpose of that was to get rid of all the plastic and the cooling system. While I was doing that, I noticed that the Toyota factory thermostat housing is also plastic. So I have a more robust radiator in now that has a radiator cap that is a 20 PSI radiator cap compared to the stock one that's about 13, 14 PSI. The factory Toyota thermostat housing, it's not known to fail. This one has lasted 153,000 miles, and as far as I know, it'll go another 50,000 miles without failing. The issue is, I just increased the overall pressure in the cooling system to a higher PSI and increased the risk of that plastic thermostat housing <laughs> failing. That's the problem that I've introduced to this by upgrading the radiator. My solution has been after a lot of digging and trying to find a thermostat housing that would work, not finding any, only finding newer plastic ones for Toyotas that are out now, I found this, which is for a Honda K engine. K20 and the K24 Honda engines is what this is made for. It's made to swivel, so I can swivel it around to whatever angle I want. I'm just thinking like, why did you use this and not something else? That's, there, are, there are other aluminum housings, there are, but those are cast aluminum housings. This is solid aluminum, billet aluminum, machined out of a piece of solid aluminum. There are a few problems with this that I'll have to address. Uh, one, this is smaller. This, this nipple is 32 millimeters versus the hose on the FJ Cruiser, which is 34. Another is a lot of aluminum has to be grinded around from the edge. This doesn't matter how much aluminum is ground off of this, as long as this can still push evenly down on this. Another thing, these are all three different sizes. These two look similar, but they're actually different sizes. And I don't have anything that I can plug this with, so I'll have to find out what fitting this is. I will be plugging it with two sensors that are over there. Coolant pressure, coolant temperature sensor. It's mainly oil pressure or oil temperature, but it can be used on coolant also. The purpose of that is to monitor this after this is installed for any leaks in the cooling system. So if there's a leak in the cooling system, then I'll know because there will be a pressure drop before it overheats. That sensor setup is gonna go in this engine build that I have that will be going in the IS300. So it's an Aristo engine that I'm waiting on pistons for, so that's separate beside the point. And th since this was the cheapest possible billet thermostat housing that I could find, it came with a cheap thermostat. I'm not trusting this thermostat at all. I'm actually going to match it up to a, another thermostat that I can use that hopefully is a factory Toyota one. The snap ring actually holds the, uh, the thermostat into this aftermarket thermostat housing. So you can put any thermostat in here, lower threshold thermostat, 165 degree, whatever. Moving straight into this video, getting to the thermostat housing is not that difficult. I mainly just have to loosen these two 10 millimeter nuts. I've already loosened them and set those aside. That's a good spot to put them. There's my thermostat housing. It's all nice and plasticky. Yeah, it's cool, right? No, not plastic is going to go. Those 
10 millimeter nuts. I'm just going to loosen these. This is a nine inch extension, universal swivel, and then 10 millimeter shallow socket. And then I just need pliers. I'm gonna take pliers to this, uh, to this hose clamp first and then get that off. Ten mil. It's the shallow ten mil on the universal swivel. And for anyone that's watching this video just to learn how to change out the thermostat housing, don't put in anything other than OEM. For one. Um, the non-OEM ones are not known to last as long as the OEM ones. And you're only talking about a, a tiny difference in price. You can buy the OEM, the Toyota original, for about $40 online. Where if you put in the non-OEM ones, they're not tested as extensively as the Toyota ones. So you increase your risk of this cracking not lasting as long, maybe the thermostat locking up. And just a note, it is a little hard to spin the, uh, the universal swivel with the 10 millimeter on this bottom nut that's closest to the engine. The torque specs for this, should you need to uh, put the, th the factory thermostat back on, I'll have pop up whenever I pull up. I have a Toyota factory service manual specifically for the 2007 FJ Cruiser. Well, most of that went in the bucket. So there is a rubber ring that is also part of this. It looks like it was stuck to the engine, but this rubber ring slips down in there and makes a seal. All right. Now that I've got the thermostat housing off, I've got this, and putting it between the studs fits great. That's exciting. But this, let's, let's see this. So I line this up. So this side will be ground down quite a bit so that it fits. So now I'm going to mark the three holes that I need to drill through on this in order to make it fit. Okay, just uh, have everything laid out here before I assemble everything and then put it in the FJ Cruiser. This is all the work that I need to do and everything fits and it's, it's perfect. Just gonna talk about that. But first, yes, I am working on the floor, but I'm working on the floor because my bench is taken by the 2JZ GTE from the Aristo that's going in the IS300, so. Sorry, that takes precedence. I'm not putting that stuff on the floor. I'll be working on this on the floor. Walking through everything. First, I had to cut all of this, and you see this is the orientation that it goes on the engine. So this is the way the old thermostat housing went. And this is part of the new thermostat housing that holds this down. So this goes in this direction whenever it's, whenever it's on. I'll show me mounting this in a second. The parts that you have to cut off of this, if you do the same thing that I'm doing, I had to cut this off because on the engine I have a picture popping up that shows that there's a uh, part of the casting that's on the water neck that this thermostat housing bolts into. This needs to be cut off and I had to grind into it a little bit so there's still a decent amount of aluminum. Similarly there is down here, which I'll also have a picture popping up, there's a, a little thing that hangs off. I cut this off because I mismeasured. I really didn't have to cut this off but it does look better if this is gone. There's a little bracket that hangs off down here that it's in the way of this mounting flush to the engine. That's what needs to be cut off. Also, you need to drill hole. So I had to drill a hole here. I really just used the side of my drill bit and pushed sideways with the drill instead of drilling straight down because I don't have a drill press. If I did have a drill press, this would be immensely easier. And then do the same thing here, round this one up, and then do the same thing here, move this one in. So that's everything that needs to be cut. Talking about this. This is not the thermostat that goes in this. I had to modify this to fit. This is the thermostat that went into it. This is a 52 millimeter thermostat. It's a pretty small thermostat. It's got a smaller opening. 
than the Toyota original one did. Um, I could probably use this, but I don't like how this it looks like it's flimsily pressed in from this bracket on top that holds the spring in. Because I've seen these come out before, just under normal use, these, uh, these pull because of the springs pushing on this. So I'm not using this. This thermostat is a thermostat from a 2003 RAV4. It's a very common thermostat. Toyota uses 56 millimeter thermostats. If you compare this to this, thermostat depth is the same. The opening hole on the bottom here and here is the same. And if you line these up side by side, you can see this uh, pizza cutting wheel thing in the bottom. It's the same diameter. Not that that really matters because it's the same length and everything. So I had to grind off two millimeters from the edge all the way around and I'm going to show a little clip of me pointing that out. It's going to be popping up in a second. So I ground this one down the two millimeters off of the edge uh, so that it is 52 millimeters just like the other thermostat. Put the rubber ring that's from the, or from the thermostat that came with this kit around the outside of the Toyota thermostat. Slid it in here, put the snap ring on it. So this is a 1 8 NPT, this is 3 8 NPT, and this is M18 by 1.5. I Teflon taped these. Um, unfortunately, my temperature probe is too deep. Uh, so if you try to thread this in, it actually bumps the thermostat. So I would have to run this without a thermostat. I actually have an M18 by 1.5 to 1 8 NPT adapter coming so that I can put that in here. What I'm going to do right now, just to show the proof of concept that this does work, is I've got a bike tube that I'm using as a sleeve. Since this is 32 millimeter, and the inside diameter of the radiator hose is 34 millimeter, this makes a perfect fit, and it's just a it's a it's rubber also, so it's it's pretty much providing a seal. Um, there are sleeves that are similar to this that are sold for like LS1 swaps kits. Uh, you get the sleeve and you put it on the nipple, and then Whenever you swap the engine in, even though your radiator hose is a different size, the radiator hose goes on your radiator because you're using this rubber sleeve that's like three or four millimeters thick. So this is probably about, I think it's like, this is about a one millimeter thick. It's a pretty thin bike tube, maybe two millimeters. I'm not sure. It's a cheap one. This bolt's a little difficult to get in. The bolt that you need to use is one inch thread. You can't use studs because this is, this is too thick. Of a, of a housing. You won't be able to slide it in because of the brackets that I pointed out earlier. That's the, the little lips that that's over here and on the bottom. You, you can't put this on. Even if you have one stud in, you just, you just can't do it. I put it in like this and then I turn it down and then uh, tighten everything up and then it fits. So I'm going to video me putting this in and then uh, we're gonna do a test startup and then see how it works. Make sure there's no leaks. So here's where the thermostat housing goes. It's fairly easy to remove. As I said earlier, there are three studs there, there, and there. I've already removed these two. I'm taking all three of these studs out because whenever I put the new thermostat housing on, it's too thick and there's no room to screw the nuts onto the stud. Uh, once you remove the nut itself, then the thermostat housing just slips off, right? So this is removing this last remaining stud. Now, if you haven't done this before, this is one of the old studs that I removed. Put these two nuts on and then you tighten them to each other. So you're trying to loosen one and you're trying to tighten the other so that you lock them in. The one that's on the back side, you loosen. And you don't want to over tighten this because the, uh, the threads will stretch on the stud and you actually can uh, split the stud in half. I should just be able to turn this. Yeah. Just like that. And it's loose. And that's the last stud. It's taken out. So the assembly is ready to go on. Uh, I do want to make a quick note. I did not have anything large enough to tighten down this, uh, this radiator uh, fitting. I had to use a pipe wrench to get it on. Uh, it's larger than 36 millimeters because that's, that's the largest tool that I have. The bolts that I'm using I have three one inch long bolts and I'll be using those. You can use longer ones, you can use an inch and a quarter, or whatever, you'll just be tightening the bolt longer, obviously. But you do need an absolute minimum, nothing shorter than one inch. And I, I stress that because the housing, this housing is five eighths inch thick. So there's only three eighths of the bolt that actually sticks through. 
And this water neck down here that the thermostat housing bolts into, that is 3 8 inch thick. So if you go longer, it doesn't matter because the there, the threads are cut all the way through to the back of the housing. So you can put an inch and a quarter, you can put a two inch bolt in there if you want to, but that's completely pointless because you'll be tightening it forever and use automotive grade. They, these are automotive grade. These came from some engine that I pulled them from that was junk a while back. This is all ready to go in and if the sensor, I have the Teflon tape on it ready to go. And that I have to put in after because whenever I put the sensor in, it blocks the bolt hole up here. I have to put it in like this and then turn it like that so that it clears a thing that it bumps down there that's part of the casting for that uh, that water neck, that coolant neck. Just to prevent possibly cross-threading, thread in the 10 millimeter by hand first. Now I put these two in first, the one on top and then the one on front by the radiator fan because it's more difficult to get this one in on, in the back. So I want to make sure that the hole's lined up and I want to prevent my possibility of cross-threading that. Also a quick note, if you use any bolts that are longer than one inch, you will have difficulty getting a 10 millimeter with a swivel on the head of the bolt without threading it in because I'm having difficulty getting the one inch bolt in enough to where I can put this 10 millimeter socket and extension with the swivel on it. So all three are nice and snug. Let me double check this top one. So to tighten up my coolant pressure sensor now. I'll run the wires for this separately because that's not included in the video, but then we can start this up and try it out. And there you have the finished product. And uh, I just filled up the system with coolant, so I'm about to start it up and test it out and just let it run and watch for leaks. You can see the edge of the O-ring here if you look really closely. Uh, and it's there's not enough room for the O-ring to squeeze out between the housing and the housing. <laughs> and then over on this side, have the uh, M18 by 1.5 to 1.8 NPT adapter with one sensor in it and then the other 3.8 to 1.8 NPT adapter on the on the back side and then it's just the 1.8 plug that I, it's really it's too shallow to stick anything in you need a sensor that's about um, as long as the threads going into that so I don't, I don't know what you could actually put in there let's start this up and see if there's any leaks and then my two sensor wires that are going to the gauge, they're really just running up this bracket here. It's nice, safe, and snug, and I have them on with twisty ties there and there, just attached to this vacuum line. Actually, it does look like I did have a small leak develop between my, uh, in my 1.8 to 3.8 NPT adapter. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching. This has been a very interesting video. One thing that I did notice while I was researching this and, uh, and doing this, I may do another tow package upgrade because what I noticed is the Toyota Tacoma, it came with an oil filter cooler, like a lot of, I think every one of Toyota's performance engines. Uh, comes with the oil filter cooler. The Tacoma tow package has a, a filter cooler that they uh, mount in underneath the oil filter and it has two coolant tubes that go to this little uh, coolant body, coolant manifold. I don't really know exactly what it's called. I am going to look into buying one and putting one on the FJ so that will be a video coming up in the future also. So let me know down in the comments below if you want to see that because I'm probably going to do the modification anyway. And there's a good chance I'm going to make a video of it. But that's it, though. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, and God bless.